Expert in Las Vegas. It's the Cube, covering .next Conference 2016. Brought to you by Nutanix. Now here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Stu Miniman. We're back. This is Silicon Angle's the Cube. Silicon Angle is uh, Silicon Angle Media. Uh, has a flagship program called the Cube. We go out to the events. We extract the signal from the noise. Tony Parkinson is here. He's the Vice President of Alliances at Dell. Tony, thanks very much for being on theCUBE. Great to be here, thank you. So, a lot of buzz between <laughs> Dell and Nutanix this absolutely, week. Absolutely, right? absolutely. Very exciting to see, uh, you know, we just announced that we're going to renew our partnership. Uh, Alan Atkinson, our GM, announced that this morning here. Uh, so that's really exciting. We were at Dell World, I think, one year. We yep. ran it to Alan, he said, I'm, I'm going to go do a deal with, with Nutanix. We said, wow, that's cool. And then last year at .next, we saw him, he was there, he had right. a presence, but you know, it was still getting started. Yep. And then today he announced the 10 figure pipeline. Wow, yeah. what a difference a year makes. So yeah, no, it's I, happening. I, oh, I think if you look back, um, you know, the formal partnership started two years ago, but actually Alan was talking to, to the Nutanix team you know, even before then. And we're seeing these trends in this journey our customers have been going through, converged infrastructure, and now this hyper-converged infrastructure. And I think the difference there is with the conversion infrastructure, it was kind of more a bladed architecture, but still the, how customers deployed server storage and networking was still the same sort of flavor. With hyperconverged, it's really changing the game. And we saw that Nutanix had a web scale architecture that really facilitated you know, true next generation technologies based on industry standard platforms. Uh, we've got a world-class leading platform with our PowerEdge platform, so it was, a, it was a great marriage between two companies wanting to be disruptive, and that's what Dell's all about. And you hear from Nutanix, they want to be disruptive as well. So we heard today as well that the, the, the agreement was extended. Yeah. Um, was, it, was it kind of timing-wise, it was sort of up for extension, or was it like, <laughs> a, like you sign an athlete up bef bef before no. his, uh, his contract is no, up? No, so the contract we started was in July uh, 2014. So, so it's about time. Yeah, it's about yeah. time for that, and you know, no, there's no hesitation in uh, renewing it. Um, you know, it's been a hugely successful business for both companies. So a lot of people are saying, wow, once the Dell EMC merge is going to happen, <laughs> that whole Nutanix deal is going to un unravel. Um, I think the point of announcing up you know, stage today I think we kind of squashed that one. Right, um, so, so, so what's the, give us the party line on Yeah, on no, look, I, I think you know, if you know Dell, um, it's all about offering our customers choice. Um, and Nutanix gives us a you know, true multi-hypervisor agnostic, uh, you know, hyper-converged platform. Um, Great, great opportunity for us to have that conversation with our customers. Uh, certainly when the EMC um, uh, acquisition is uh, confirmed, uh, then you know, Dell will be the clear global leader in all things storage, um, be it traditional storage, uh, next generation uh, you know, storage, SAN, based on our compelling technologies for example, and then we have the, you know, the, the great assets from, from EMC combined with, uh, with the leading uh, hyper-converged technologies, Nutanix, we're in a great position to offer choice to our customers. That's what it's all about. One of everything. <laughs> well, not so much one of everything. I think, you know, as we heard this morning, you know, you've got to be able to you know, go with what our customers are wanting. They want flexibility, they want choice, and they want next generation architectures that meet their business needs. You know, and, and we think we offer that capability um, to not only integrate with the existing architectures, I think that's really important. You know, customers don't just throw everything out and put the new stuff in. I'm um, say it's it's a journey for our customers. But I mean, it's not it's not a pejorative. I mean, there isn't a. If you look at Dell Technologies, what will become Dell yeah. Technologies? There's not a market that it doesn't correct either. Uh, well, basically lead in. Yeah. I mean, basically, going to be number one in every single market segment yeah. there is. And it's Lock, exciting stuff. File, object, yeah. big, small. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and partnering is in our DNA as well, and I think you saw that the level of partnering um, is evidence today. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the history of Nutanix, I was fortunate enough to be in Europe when, when we signed the original agreement, um, and they focused on a workload that had uh, over-promised and under-delivered for many years being VDI, Virtual Desktop Infrastructure. Um, they took that as an opportunity to transform how that's deployed, take the cost dynamics out of that, build a huge beachhead with VDI and now are spreading to uh, more traditional applications, be it uh, even Oracle, uh, DB2, you know, non, even non-virtualized type environments. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, it's part of that success and we've got almost a thousand Nutanix customers together. 
and it really is a partnership. I think you know, it's not just a simple matter of taking web scale software and putting it on you know, the best server platform on the planet. It's the engineering underneath that that our customers don't necessarily see, and we don't want them to see. That should be transparent for our mm -hmm. customers. So it's, it's building that beachhead of VDI globally, and now you know, making it a, a more ubiquitous platform with cloud. Um, you know, there was an awesome demonstration yesterday of how to deploy a container. Um, that really blew away a lot of, lot of people in the audience. And that's a new technology for a lot of our customers, but it's that vision, it's that future that uh, the Nutanix and Dell platforms offers our customers. So, Tony, how does Dell differentiate with the, the, the OEM solution versus uh, the, you know, the, the, the other options that Nutanix Yeah, you know, we were the first tier one OEM platform partner. Um, say, you know, credit to the work that Nutanix did with the other platform vendor initially. Um, I think that the big differentiator there is customer preference. They wanted a tier one platform, and you know we offer global servicing, a consistent delivery model, uh, especially for global com companies who want to deploy these architectures globally across you know uh, 50, 80 countries. They want to know that the experience from a service support spares infrastructure is there. Uh, the same in New York as it is in any other country in the world, and I think that's a big differentiator. Uh, also, I think the engineering work that we do, uh, leveraging our iDRAC technology, for example, in our PowerEdge platforms does differentiate us, and, it's, and it's, it's really the holistic experience for our customers beyond just the platform that I think does differentiate us from, from, uh, you know, from, the, from the other experience. Okay. You, you, you talked about the, the growth of the pipeline that you've got, right. and you've got a broad portfolio. How much of it is customers coming and say, hey, I, I heard about Hyperconverge, or I want Nutanix, or right, I right. want it from Dell, and, and how much of it is you know, you know, your, your channel partners and Dell people being prescriptive on which piece of the portfolio fits in Yeah, no, Dell? that's a great question, mm -hmm. and I, I think the approach we've had uh, is working very closely with the Nutanix team, but when we have discussions with customers, it's a storage discussion. What are your key pain points around your storage you know, challenges that you have, and from then, you then determine, you know, what, what's your risk aversion to new technologies, for example. Are you a traditional legacy SAN-based customer? You're happy to continue to invest in that technology, um, and that would be kind of classified as your do-it-yourselfers, the best-in-class guys who will take the best, in, they perceive the best-in-class server, storage and networking, and put that together themselves. Um, we've seen this uh, converged infrastructure. We still do a lot of converged infrastructure with our bladed architecture, but now, um, you know, the, the growth and the customer base on Hyperconverged is really now, you know, customers are coming to us saying, hey, tell us more about this Nutanix pl platform architecture, what are your thoughts? Can you do compares? And I think we're in a great position to do those compares because we will have legacy SAN architectures, next generation SAN architectures, uh, and Hyperconverged architectures to compare and contrast cost efficiencies, how, how quickly can I deploy it? And one of the things we've done a lot of training uh, for our sales makers, what's the value prop, what's the time to value for our customers on these new generation solutions? Explain that nuance. Yeah. You, when you talk to customers between, you know, you mentioned you, right. Dell has converged, sure. certainly EMC has converged infrastructure, and then hyper-converged. What's that right. conversation like? The customers say, well, what's the difference? What do you tell them? Yeah, no, it, 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 it comes down to, um, the, it's more challenging sometimes for larger customers because they have the, the, the three silos within the IT organization, their server team, their networking team, and their storage teams. And Converge started to disrupt that, that, those hierarchies. Hyperconverge disrupts it even more because you, know, you don't really need a storage expert anymore to deploy Hyperconverged. We typically ask the, the customers, you know, how much are you spending keeping the lights running and how much would you like to spend on innovation? And then that, it kind of filters out depending on the customer's existing uh, way they run their IT. If they want to continue to pursue that, like I said, there's still a lot of customers out there who say, interesting, but I'll keep my existing architecture, refresh that with the next generation uh, technologies. Um, and then we see, as you saw this morning, I'm saying very large organizations saying no. I want to get in and, and accelerate my journey to the cloud. I believe that the hyperconverged infrastructure gets me there faster than my, my legacy environment. And, and what we're seeing is a lot, very large customers having a legacy team as well as a what we call a next generation platform three organization, uh, you know, 
and it's not it's not black and white. I'm saying some of it gets down to you know hardcore. What's the what, what's the return on investment given their existing environment? And as you heard today, it's all about the people change. It's the people change management is is typically the the, the largest. It's like well, I've done this this way for the last 15 years. What do you mean I don't need to set up lungs anymore? That's right. what I've done. I'm an expert at that. I'm an expert at that. <laughs> and, and, and there's a big transformation. I think, you know, if you look at the data center itself, there's the physical data center transformation that will continue on forever, right? Um, but it's the people and process transformation that I think, you know, these new technologies really challenge. Yeah. All right. If we go into the environment that you're selling Nutanix yep. into, uh, you said you started VDI. Yep. You, I mean, Dell's got pretty much with Nutanix. It's the whole stack. Yeah, I mean, including uh, you know uh, yeah. the, the client, everything like that. You've got the, uh, the that's a true end-to-end -end perspective, and I think that also played to our strength in terms yeah. of we can have that. You know, if you do a VDI deployment, it has to impact these things as well. Yeah. I think with the Wise acquisition yep. we had is we, we're we're one of the only companies now that truly can look at a VDI deployment from how does it impact the end users from the type of device, right through that middle layer infrastructure management and the back end data center, um, and the teams work collaboratively across that platform versus having a client discussion independent of the data center discussion uh, and and all of those nuances that that. You know, even coming down to SLAs um, and one-stop shopping for stuff like warranty support, uh, and that's that's also a differentiation. Is that when we look at our VDI deployment, we can offer a customer a one-stop shop for all of their support infrastructure, be it client, be it the operating system, be it the back-end infrastructure. So, yeah. you know, that that's been a an accelerator for us and our success with this VDI platform in so Nutanix. So can you give any color? Is that the majority of deployments that you've had, you know? I, I, I would say up until last year, it was probably the majority of the deployments, but we're now seeing a rapid shift. So I also have the pleasure of managing the Microsoft relationship uh, as well as the SAP relationship, and they're now building architectures for SAP based on Nutanix. So it is, you know, it is probably still, you know, VDI is still important, but, you know, as we, you know, I don't think we've saturated that market, but as that matures, then you know, you're going to see deployments on technologies uh, from Oracle, uh, SQL, uh, D even DB2, right? So customers can manage their virtualized and their you know, bare metal deployments and environments from the one, one management pane of glass. That's attractive for customers. Yeah, and, and so what can you speak to about kind of the geos and verticals and you know, where, where you're finding? Uh, yeah, the, so the, the geos, there? I can certainly cover Europe and North America, having worked in Europe and, and, and worked in North America. Um, in the geos, I, I would say in, in Europe, the first, uh, first country, if you were at a country level, out of the gate was France. France was a really aggressive early adopter of Nutanix architectures. And that, that, that then spread through the rest of Europe. Um, then you know, Middle East started to deploy it. So you see this filtering out because in a lot of cases, nobody wants to be first, right? Um, it's a, you know, with, you know, who heard of Nutanix three or four years ago, right? We haven't seen this level of disruption and success, right? In, and, and, and we're talking large organizations who are normally risk adverse. You're talking insurance agencies. Uh, we're now seeing banks deploy, NASDAQ deploying it. You talk about risk averse, these guys are normally, whoa, I'll go and play with that in the background. Um, in North America, um, we're now seeing very large in federal, large federal agencies, which we can't name. Um, uh, still some VDI deployments, but uh, medical, um, we're seeing a lot of deployments in the medical environment. Healthcare uh, is, is a key vertical uh, for these technologies. Um, as well as manufacturing, it, it's really becoming ubiquitous. You know, it's it's not trying to be all things to all people, but you're starting to see you know these vertical categories becoming you know. Uh, but but the 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 founding stone was VDI, and then that's been successful in those organisations. And then what happens is by osmosis, the other de the IT departments talk to uh, to to the VDI deployments, was that successful? Well, what if we can use this for other parts of our infrastructure? So you see it, it really spreading from a VDI beachhead out into other application environments. As those workloads evolve, yeah. how does that affect the channel partners? Oh, the channel is, is fundamental to our success, and you know, we, we've been very successful with um, you know, taking on new channels, and new, it's new business models for our channel partners. Right? Uh, trying to just shift in. Uh, is a tough business model. Um, there's a lot of value add around the Nutanix platform, uh, new service models uh, being developed, 
and new application tools. You know, if you talk about the cloud, it's an ecosystem, and there's a lot of new ecosystems building around the deployment. Uh, things like, uh, how do I run my IT as a service? What are the tools that I need if I move to a hybrid cloud environment, right. a hybrid cloud architecture, for example? Because I've still got my on-premise assets to manage, but if you imagine the challenge when you move to three or four cloud providers, depending on the application you need, how do I manage my SLAs in, a, in, a, in, a, uh, in an on-prem and a hybrid environment? How do I manage my billing? Because more and more companies are billing downstream the lines of business for IT consumption. So they're moving to a consumption-based model. You've got to have the tools to say to the sales department, well, you consumed this much memory CPU and you're costing me, and here's the bill, and I want to do that on a real-time dynamic basis. So when we scale up the business or scale down the business, so those tools are still maturing, and it's a journey. And so we heard from the Nutanix architecture yesterday that, you know, that, that cloud burst you know, for my Thanksgiving peak workload. I don't want to have all of that infrastructure burning lights for eight months of the year when I do 60% of my demand in two months. So that's this uh, consumption-based model, IT as a service, transformation that we're seeing in, in our customers. So, so, so Tony, uh, Microsoft is another partner yep. Nutanix talked Absolutely. about. They announced the CPS solution. Yes. Of course, Dell is, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, the largest you know, CPS uh, yes. you know, partner, Microsoft. Uh, is there any chance for overlap in, in that? Well, I think there's always a chance for overlap, and once again, it comes down to customer it, choice. And say, you know, CPS, if you're an existing Nutanix customer and you want to deploy CPS, then that's, that's a fairly logical Choice, right? Well, Overlap is better than gaps. Have you ever heard that? Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> um, so I, I wouldn't, you know. Yeah, I, I think they're buying the guy that said that all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> so no, it, it's it's a matter of you know we're working with with uh, Nutanix on that architecture. We have our own CPS architecture, both sure. the the large scale CPS premium platform as well as the CPS standard, and we've architected that jointly with Microsoft. Um, so yeah, for for a Nutanix existing Nutanix customer, having the ability to run it on their existing architecture is pretty attractive. All right, um, so we're going to continue to work through that, and once again, it's all choice. It's customer choice. Where you know we're not going to force something on a customer if they believe that the Nutanix solution and architecture gives them better flexibility, fits into their existing environment. Then I think that's a perfect solution for our customer base. Excellent. Well, Tony, we're out of time, but okay. so what's, your, what's your bumper sticker on uh, on dot next? You know, what's your trip report? Yeah. Trip report. Uh, Thirty seconds or yeah, less. I think <laughs> it's it's a force in the industry. The largest customers in the world are deploying it. Uh, you know, Dell and Nutanix uh, have just renewed their partnership. It's been a terrific partnership. We look forward to continued success together. Um, and with the new company, Dell Technologies, you know, we will be the leader in offering our customers choice um, for their platforms around storage and compute. Well, Dell has a lot of experience in these types of, of relationships. I mean, the yeah. Dell EMC deal was epic. It yeah. was a very, very success successful uh, relationship for the better part of a decade. And look how it ended up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Tony so, Parkinson, thanks very much for thanks coming Thanks guys, on. appreciate it, thank appreciate you. It. All right, keep it right there everybody, we'll be back with our next guest right after this short break.